Okay, this video today is just to give you an idea. When you start trying to compare, and everybody does it, you look at a website and you see a machine and you try to look at their technical parameters, be it a TENS, a muscle stimulator, interferential, Russian stem, antiphoresis, any of that stuff. And it is so hard to make a comparison because one group will be talking about something called CPS. Another group will say rate. Another group will say PPS. Another comparison will say frequency. And there's more I could put on here. Question is, what are these things? What do these things mean? Well, let me tell you what every one of these things means. It means one thing. How many times in this type of instrument per second does the machine turn off and on. That's all that means. Those terms will be used to tell you something but they're used in such a way that it's hard for you to evaluate. All you're interested in, when somebody tries to throw numbers at you or try to tell you something, just ask them, how many times per second does the machine turn off and on? That's one, that's, that's electrotherapy. We call it generally rate, pulses per second. That's one basic element of electrotherapy. So let me put a little picture over here, and that's a second. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We won't call that ten pulses per second. That is rate. Machine turning off and on. All right, now, machine, you will look and they will say our width, if they even say that, or duration. You'll see that. And it's hard to figure out well, what is width and duration. Well, here's what it is. It's how long does the machine stay on. So it is. Width, duration, that's one thing. How long does the machine stay on? Now, the general way that's measured is we're actually dealing in millionths of a second, or what we call microseconds. Now, in diagnostic equipment, you actually go into thousandths of a second, but we're not, most of the stuff I think most of you are looking at are saying, you know, explain it to me for what you're looking for. Uh, a neurologist, a neurosurgeon, a physical therapist might look at uh, some specialized instruments at thousandths of a second. But how long does the machine stay on? Millions of Here's what happens. Electricity comes on. Remember, a baseline down here means nothing's happening. Machine jumps on and it stays on and then it turns off. And we're going to call that 50 microseconds. So it's on 50 millionths of a second. Then you want it to get stronger. So the next pulses may be 100. And then if you're really trying to do stimulate the in the thigh, then you really need to get it up here about to 350. But this is the amount of time, it's measured in time, the machine's on. That's all width and duration is. So let's put this over here. We're going to call this one width. I'm going to show you a picture with a small width. And I'll show you a picture with a large width. How long is the machine staying on? All right. The next one's the easiest one in the world. And I'll do this one in red to understand. And that is called amplitude. Power. And that basically boils down to 
when you turn the button, how much energy and starting off it's going to be volts and later we can measure current and that's a uh, current is I mean electrons past a given point at a given time how much volts current does the machine allow now simplistically it can only go that far and then it's given out of power but if you have another machine, it can go that much higher, and then it has no more power. But this is not something that is important as much on the high side. It is important on the low side. The reason being, this amplitude or power is sensory. A patient, I can get it up there, and they're saying, oh, that feels good. That's terrible. But when I put it up here, they are jumping out of the chair. It's hurting them. That's not good. So all we always want to do is make sure we have the minimum amount of power at least to achieve our purpose. You can't get to some of these higher limits because the patient will not tolerate it. So let's knock that one off. And we're going to call that power or amplitude or turn the machine up till you fill it. And after you fill it, does it feel good? Does it feel bad? If it feels good, you leave it. If you turn it up higher and it hurts, you turn it down. And that is basically what we call power. And visually, how high up can you increase the power? And that's what we work off of. All right, those, almost all machines that you're comparing and looking at how many times come off and on every second? How long does it stay on? Do you have the ability to control that? And does it have enough power to achieve the result? Now, one exception to this type of thing is when we talk about currents, or there's the baseline, nothing's going on. We can turn a machine on, and let's say we're gonna use a negative charge. So the machine comes on and it's width, the amount of time you keep it on. In this case, we're gonna make it 20 minutes. Now, you would never, and this is called direct current, and this can be harmful. Uh, and I'll tell you, one of the direct currents that's real harmful, I'll draw you a quick little picture. There's the chair, there's the thing. There's the patient, and this is a real big bad criminal that mass murdered mean. He's going to get direct current. We call it the electric chair. That's why they use that current in that situation, is they intend to harm that criminal. But we also use direct current for health purposes. And this, because it's a negative charge, we may have a medication that we want to get into the patient. We don't want to have to use it orally. They don't want a needle. Orally is because you have to use so much more medication with all sorts of potential side effects. And we need a smaller amount if we can get it where we want it to go. So we would actually take a medication. Now, now uh, epinephrine would be one of them. Uh, we would also use cortisone, people that are getting cortisone injections. I believe it has an E at the end. All right. What we do is we put, example, the ions, which is what the molecules and stuff come together to form these types of chemicals. Say it has a negative charge. We represent that with the, that. When we turn this machine, and we're going to put right in here, let's put in a bunch of our medication. We're going to put it in a reservoir, in a little electrode. And we're going to put medication in there, and then we're going to apply a negative charge. And remember, this is negative also. So, what's going to happen here? 
the stronger of the two, you may remember my magnet example earlier, right here, neither affects the other one. But if you make this one much stronger and you start moving it, something's got to give. Guess what's giving? It's this medication. It is being driven by this current into the skin and if there's a joint, we end up with the joint down here that needs cortisone. And after approximately 20 minutes with some buffer in it, if we go in there and start looking around and do a biopsy, we are going to find this joint totally covered with what used to be there, but now it's gone because we drove it in. That cortisone is now in the joint. We've achieved the, the medical effect. That's an example of a form of direct current. And that is one of the things uh, we use. Now, the last thing I'll do is just a little thing about waveforms. I told you I was going to make this simple. I hope this is simple. Uh, I know it's not. I've been doing it for so long. It seems sort of simple to me now, but it's still complicated. Uh, other things, a waveform. And basically, a waveform is somebody just say, well, what is your waveform? Well, basically, whatever you are told, they're only telling you what is the waveform coming out of the machine, not what's going on inside your body. So this is not always a totally valid thing to consider. But here's an example of a waveform. Machine comes on, goes down 50% of its power, pops back up, turns off. Here's another waveform that goes on. We hold it for a while. It goes down. It goes actually below, changes charges, and then drags out here. And that's a, a pulse, that's a, what they call a dual peak spike wave. Uh, and then we also have, we may have the most common form in the clinic was a sinusoidal waveform. And all that is, is whatever amount of positive energy you have there, you have negative energy here. And so you do not develop what is called uh, a keloid scar and basically if you were to take a positive charge on the surface of the skin under the skin you're going to have negative ions and you will also have positive ions but at the end of a time period with that positive charge going what do you have right here on the surface of the skin. Well, remember, opposites attract. You've got a bunch of negative ions up here. It's been attracted. Now, what's deeper? Well, you've been pushing away. What does that mean? If you were to go with direct current over a longer time period, you create, right here, you get an acidic imbalance and you kill this tissue, and now guess what you're stuck with? A scar. And that was because you changed the pH balance, and the result of that destruction is the formation of scar tissue. But that is a form of where you use different waveforms. But I hope this gives you just a, a general idea when we're talking about electrotherapy, how it is difficult to make comparisons. I do encourage you to look for the technical specs. And I do encourage you when anyone's talking with you and claiming anything, that you keep these things in mind. How many times do your machine go off and on per second? If they can't answer that, leave. Do you have the ability to control the width? If they don't know what you're talking about, be very skeptical. And then when they say, we have more power than someone else, remember, that's only relative to the patient's tolerance of that amount of power. You've got to have a minimum amount of power. But we can put a lot of power and it can become harmful. So we want to work within certain parameters. I hope this gives you an easier understanding of electrotherapy terms. And please tell me that I made it simple, because I know it isn't. Thanks for watching. At MedFacts, 
Our priority is to educate and inform on topics such as pain relief, sports performance, injury rehab, nutrition, antioxidants, electron supplementation, and electrotherapy. We carry a complete line of electrotherapy devices and accessories including interferential, TENS, ultrasound, muscle stimulators, electrodes, and more. We are excited about being on the cutting edge of electrotherapy research. 